Hey guys, welcome back to our E3 2017 show floor discussion. In part 2, we'll be discussing the rest of Spazzy's experiences on the show floor. So then, why don't we switch gears and to talk about the show floor as a whole. So the overall E3 2017 show floor. Not just the uh, demos. <laughs> um, it was... the entire environment, and you, you, you hear this a lot, mm -hmm. was different this year. And I'm not saying that the floor should be open to the public. Uh, it's nice. E3 has become bigger than kind of its industry origins. Mm -hmm. It's become kind of just, you know, it's almost like a legendary thing. It's where people, where all the new games get revealed. Mm -hmm. um, but there's, there were a lot of people there that kind of had the convention mentality. And it was weird because it's not. It's an industry expo. Yeah. It's, <laughs> and you have people, I saw like five different people cosplaying as D.Va. And it was weird. <laughs> There's not even any Blizzard <laughs> games there, but whatever. People love Diva. Um, and I felt like things were done a little bit differently. The way swag was given out, there were more like vendor booths and stuff around. It definitely and sounds like it was treated almost more like a convention. It, or at it least to at least to the public. <laughs> it wasn't nearly as much though. So I think the other thing is the public was there, and they were kind of. I, I'd imagine a lot of them were kind of disappointed as well because, you know, they're waiting four hours in line for, for something, you know? Yeah. To play 15 minutes of a game, and it's not set up to handle that many people. And right. They need to, and if they're going to keep it, they need to do something a little bit different. I don't know. Uh, earlier hours, I think maybe press and industry hours only. Um, and maybe... I, I, I would say add an extra day, but I don't know. They'd have to probably... Uh, <laughs> Up the charge for everybody. I don't know if that would really, you know, <laughs> even help. But overall, it was it was still very cool. Uh, I got my Super Mario Odyssey uh, visor. So <laughs> oh, the, the 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 little cappy one. <laughs> yeah, trip worth it. Uh, <laughs> I feel like there were more photo ops than normal. Uh, I mean, of course, the only other year I went was last year. Uh, but there were a lot. There were like a lot of giant dragons for like. Uh, mm -hmm. The, that Lord of the Rings game and like Warhammer game and there's another dragon. Oh, Monster Hunter <laughs> had a giant dragon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> how was the? Uh, I'm I'm curious. How was uh, being in New Donk City? Um, Nintendo knocked it out of the park. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was it was awesome. There was once again a lot of photo ops. There was Mario's a tank. There were the Mario Goombas. Mm -hmm. The Goomba pile. Um, the the centerpiece of it was kind of the stage where the treehouse stuff was going on, so you could see mm -hmm. all the treehouse stuff live. The people were there. Okay, interesting. Um, yeah, and all the lines to Mario. The first day, actually, Nintendo was kind of a mess. Like, it was really bad. The second day, they kind of taped it off, and Nintendo was actually pretty organized. Um, okay. They had they had people dressed uh, like the people from New Donk City <laughs> that were there, like, to take your photo and tell you where things were. Where, you know, kind of the gray suits, sunglasses... Yeah, that's funny. So, yeah, it was cool. They had uh, all the Amiibo stuff in the middle, so you could, you know, get up close and personal and see what all the Amiibos look like. Did, were mm -hmm. you able to see the Amiibos uh, where you were as well or no? Um, I believe there was actually somebody walking around with, like, a iPad, like, picture cycle of all of them, but they didn't actually have them there. The physical Amiibos? Okay. No, it would have been nice, but because Nintendo New York has, like, a little amiibo section where it displays every amiibo so it would have been nice to have a little thing there saying these are the new ones but no okay well i mean from what i saw they were they were pretty good mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um ubisoft's area was I, I think i alluded to this last time kind of mm -hmm. a mess but they had ubisoft had a lot of games um that that was the other thing compared to last year too is that there were less instances of let's just walk up and play this game there's a line for everything for a small little indie games everything out of line <laughs> but there like i said there were quite a few um other you know quite a few more people than last year not not <laughs> even counting that they were weren't press range Just the volume of people went from fifty thousand to sixty eight thousand. yeah so that's gonna happen um overall i don't think there was as, as much great swag which is sad <laughs> you had to fight for it like I think I said before, I really wanted the Splatoon hat, but I lost yeah. my Splatoon match, so... Sad times. <laughs> um, I didn't spend a lot of time in Sony's area. Um, but they, Sony always has kind of their area to one side, with the VR boots and stuff. Okay. And it was... It was cool. Um, 
Microsoft was... Uh, you know, I did play, and I didn't say this last time, I played a whole bunch of stuff in the Square Enix area. There just wasn't that much to talk about. The city <laughs> was probably the most exciting thing. That's fair. And, uh, yeah. And they, their people were on point. Like, they'd have people to help you. It was it was good. Uh, there were a lot of games to play. Um, like I said, a lot of photo ops. Like, take your picture with an orc. Take your picture uh, <laughs> in front of this thing. Take your picture... Um, there was actually, and I, I didn't get to do this for Super Lucky's Tale, uh, Super Lucky's Tale, a blue screen, or it was a green screen, where you you could like get yourself in the game or something. It was really dumb. <laughs> That's interesting, <laughs> right? Um, um, and you know there was, there's always stuff, and it's funny too because a lot of people don't really realize this. There's, there's always kind of like the third party, like. Right hardware people mm -hmm. <laughs> that are kind of tucked away into the corner um <laughs> but it's always interesting like the what is it the 8-bit tendo or whatever like all those controllers that are compatible with uh switch mm -hmm. i get i got to see like their full lineup including the ones that look like the super nintendo controllers are coming out with which were that is pretty cool pretty cool um anyone going to e3 in the future um uh, don't eat inside of the convention center <laughs> bring your bring bring some snacks eat before and if you're hungry go out to the food trucks because the food trucks are awesome <laughs> <laughs> i mean comparatively they are comparatively awesome one thing i didn't do this year uh which pains me i just um it was just a day i, I had other th uh, other obligations it was super busy i couldn't get out to it was indicade and indicade is just kind of a separate event for me three where you get to see all of the indie games like basically a bunch of indie developers are showing off the games to you yeah. in a more kind of intimate setting it's uh harder to get into not like it's the exclusive but you know it's mostly press there's so it's it's smaller uh they had a bar last year it was pretty great <laughs> <laughs> um i mean you know it was cool i got to walk around i got to see a lot of people said hi to the game explained dudes they were nice except for yeah. ash he's <laughs> terrible <laughs> he has a nice guy they're all nice <laughs> <laughs> And that's the other thing, too, is that, you know, I'm too, personally, because I'm there to cover stuff, and because yeah. I'm not the sort of person that, you know, cares that much about it, but you always see, like, you know, quote-unquote, like, famous YouTubers, or this or that, <laughs> or, you know, like, last year in the media area, I, it was funny, I talked to, like, Matt Pat last year for, like, ten minutes, and they're like, oh, I didn't realize that you are who you are. I <laughs> so there's just, like, stuff like that, you know, um... I'll tell you, you know, I was the only staff member from Source Gaming, and uh, next year we need to get some more of you guys out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping I that I can go help out next year if I'm still part of it, which I would love to be. But <laughs> there's, there's a lot to cover. Yeah, it'll come down to how big it'll be because I do know. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Did they say that in future years of E3 they're thinking of moving where it is to a bigger place? I remember I heard reading some, about that. Yeah, I heard some rumblings of that, and they, they almost have to. Yeah. <laughs> the, the way it is. Um, LA's great. Um, you know, I did a lot of other fun stuff in LA that is not at all related to Swords Game. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it's the venue's too small for that many people at one okay. time. I mean, and it's still, it, it's still a huge thing. And you know what another fun thing about E3 is? When you're waiting in line... Uh, well, number one, you get a million street hit passes on your 3DS. So that's cool. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, I remember those days. <laughs> when you're waiting in line, there's uh, you can always watch all of the trailers over and over and over again on giant screens. <laughs> when I was in line for Mario Odyssey, the Nintendo area is, right, is adjacent to the Sony area, so yeah. I just sat there, and I got to watch a bunch of gameplay of Spider-Man. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, just... Plan your day like if anyone ever goes there. Plan your day out. Get there early. Try to get there with multiple people. Mm -hmm. And that's even standing in line because man, it'd be nice if, to have somebody to hold your spot while you use the bathroom. <laughs> in line for because some man like some some games had ridiculous lines. And it's not just necessarily like you know Mario Odyssey was you know may have been the most popular game. I I, I don't have any sort of numbers of people who play games. But mm -hmm. Nintendo also had a lot of units, you know? Yeah, Whereas... I, was, I was surprised, actually, at just how much Nintendo had this year. Because I remember hearing the main problem last year was, despite how many Breath of the Wild units they had, there were still so many people that didn't get to play it. 
when like this time like they had all the Mario Odyssey ones covered and the other games. So. Well, Nintendo even had in their area, which like I said was a really cool area. They even had uh, like little separate lines where you could play the handheld version of the games, and they weren't nearly as long. Okay. Like people were just around with those units. Um, yeah, and there's uh, uh, the big centerpiece too. Was another photo op was Mario, a statue of Mario with the Odyssey with the ship. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, like I, I wish I'd taken more pictures of the show floor, and I, I think it's a good way going forward for Nintendo to do it. But I kind of mm-hmm. wonder if they ha- they're going to have that showcase game next year. I don't know. It depends on what they have for next year because I feel like they got away with Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey because of how big those games are. Yeah, the I feel like their marquee, the only possibilities for marquee games for them next year are Metroid. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Metroid and Kirby. <laughs> Met- well, Metroid, I-, I could see them announcing an Animal Crossing. Yeah. Um, I could see them announcing Smash, and Smash would be, <laughs> would be, be big. Yes. Um, Animal Crossing, Smash, Metroid. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I think I've had well, this conversation well, with people before. Well, there's there's Kirby and Yoshi they announced for some time in 2018. Yeah, but neither of those are going to be, like, marquee games. Yeah, I you guess. Know, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe Retro's new 3D Donkey Kong. <laughs> <laughs> so, I actually have a... Also, Fire Emblem. Fire Emblem's not going to... Yeah, because the Fire Emblem Switch. Uh, so, I have a question for you now, since you've been to both last year's and this year's E3, and Nintendo seems like they ran both of the last two years fairly similarly with how they're doing it. Obviously, this year had a much bigger push for more than one game because they were focusing on like everything for the Switch and also reassuring the 3DS is not dying yet. <laughs> yeah. um, do you think... A future E3 would be for Nintendo would be run the same way, or do you think they would run it differently, like change formulas? Well, that, that's the thing is they can't continue to run it this way unless they have a game to focus the area around. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, um, I. It depends what they want to do. If they have another game that's going to be the showcase game, the centerpiece game, like I said, you know, if they want to do kirby or you know i don't know a new Star Fox, 3d donkey Kong, whatever 2d donkey Kong for, for all we know 2d mario <laughs> <laughs> they could do a 2d mario next year who knows maybe um, let's put maybe let's put a giant gamecube in the middle and just have a bunch of gamecube virtual console stuff yeah because the way they <laughs> last year was was very unique because basically all they had was, was um, zelda zelda but yeah. this year this year they had a lot of stuff but the centerpiece was still everything was mario odyssey themed mm-hmm so I think they'll keep the same basic formula uh, format where they'll have the treehouse stuff going there and you can see it, and okay. they'll have kind of kind of their area. But as far as the theming and photo ops go, I, I, I it's a really it's a really good way for them to do it. Um, by the way, you know what totally could be their centerpiece uh, next year? What? Uh, Pokemon, Pokemon. Switch. Oh, you know what? That is entirely true. Yeah, so that might be it. <laughs> I can I, I I can totally see them doing that because I'm pretty sure Pokemon Switch is going to be their big holiday title next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to say Pokemon Switch um, and then another big November title. Maybe something like 2D Mario uh, Animal Crossing. Maybe Smash. I don't know. That might be too early for Smash depending on how they're doing it. And I don't think Metroid's coming out next year. I, 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 the earliest I can see Metroid coming out is like holiday. But I oh, can I see can, it being I, I can like see it spring of hardly. 2000. Spring of 2019 maybe sort of deal. Yeah, I it, it looks that. like Looks like they haven't even really started on it. <laughs> um, I mean, no I'm Pikmin idea. Four as well, but once again, it's not a big game. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think I, I think it works how they do it works, and um, their area is. And maybe I'm biased as a Nintendo fan, <laughs> but their area feels more fun than any of the other areas because of it. You know, because yeah. it's like it's like a it's almost like a theme park. You know, you go and you see all the things, and there's. All the theming of the area, yeah. and all the photo ops, and all the cool stuff going on, and people are dressed a certain way. So I think that generally it's going to stay the same. The, the big thing is if there's going to be a central game that everything's themed around. Right. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Do um, you have any other other questions about E3? Um, I guess. Are you inter? Are, are you excited to keep going back for this kind of stuff, or are you, are you getting too worn out from it? <laughs> Not by myself. This is a <laughs> lot of work. Um, yeah. As, and I honestly, imagine. our coverage isn't nearly as in-depth as, you know, most of the sites out there. But still, like, it is it is not easy 
you know, if you think to yourself that. Uh, especially because, you know, anybody who's done, you know, we were talking about cons, any conventions, you know, how tiring it can be to try to, to get yep. stuff in. But put on top of that, that when you're media at one of these events, you're out there, you have to cover certain games, you have to look this up, you have to take notes, you have to, uh, you know, go back during the event and write I had to write, you know, or, you know, pro take video and process and upload the video. Yeah. Because you have to be timely. So it's not, you know, it's not the easiest thing, but it's also it's also fun. It's also great to see other people that are passionate about games. It's, <laughs> it's good to try to, to be able to try things out first. Yeah. Um, and it's also good, and I didn't get to do this as much this year as last year, uh, when you get to actually, you know, communicate with developers and find things out and... Um, you know, kind of get like, oh, this game's sort of similar to this game, so what were you doing here? So it's it's definitely worth it. It's definitely something I want to continue doing. Um, like I said, hopefully we can get some more people out, because it is grueling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely hope to try to help out with that next year and do pretty much everything related to that, because it's been, it's been exciting being part of it uh, this year, just helping out. Uh, on the site with Source Gaming and videos for it, I mean, it's been scrambling getting all, even just discussions. I can only imagine how it'd be for other people where they do discussions and coverage videos of it. It's gonna yeah. be crazy. Uh, like I said, I saw the Game Explained guys. When they weren't out there, there was always two of them out back in the <laughs> in the media center. Yeah. Which, you know, kind of a media-only area just doing stuff for videos. So. Mm hmm um, and, you know, there's a lot of a lot of a lot of people like that, and there's always stuff to find as well, which is interesting. And here's a question to those of you who a actually have listened to this uh, conversation, uh, YouTube, <laughs> this discussion. Uh, thank you. Uh, we love you guys. Um, <laughs> and but here's here's the question: If you've listened this long, please comment and let let us know when we go to these sort of events. You know, uh, Push Dustin uh, recently went to Bit Summit as well. What sort of coverage do you want from us? Because we've kind of gone back and forth and like, well, yeah, we could get try to get some video, try to get some pictures, this or that. But there's a million other sites that do that, you know? Um, and at Source Gaming, we'd like to provide you with whatever content you want. You know, we're, we're going there to show things to you. So if there's anything in particular, you know, more interviews uh, with developers, more reactions, more whatever, you know, please let us know because it'll, it'll help us make better content for you guys. Yeah, definitely. It'd be really useful, and it could, it could even just be like, say we go for all the days of E3, so the second and last day, we, we send out messages online, it's like, hey, what do you guys want us to focus on on the final day? And then we kind of set our itinerary right. based on what you guys want. You know, if you want us to, like, list out the best booths that are giving out swag, and then all the companies <laughs> that way. Um, if you want us to rate the food trucks outside and tell you what's <laughs> have the best food, I mean, we'll do it. Whatever, man. We're your source for food truck uh, <laughs> quality. That's our new rebrand. <laughs> Spin-off channel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that just about wraps up this discussion. So, Spazzy, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at sourcegaming.com, source slash dash gaming, because we have a .com now. Or sourcegaming.info is, is still, still a thing. Um... You know, you can find me on Twitter at 8-bit underscore for spazzy. Um, you know, or just hanging around. If you're, <laughs> if you're in the Miami-Fort Lauderdale area, look me up, whatever. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, well... Uh, How about you? <laughs> you guys can find me at tsfeeling25 on Twitter, or doing lots of discussions or videos over at Source Gaming, or you can also find me on my Let's Play channel, Weehee. So make sure you guys subscribe to Source Gaming or follow us on Twitter at All Source Gaming to stay up to date on various gaming news, reviews, discussions, and at this rate, probably still more E3-related things <laughs> and so much more. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>